Locomotion is a fundamental task for all complex organisms. Making characters walk and run around comprises a significant amount of work in character animation. In recent years, we witnessed several breakthroughs in physics-based locomotion control and character animation. Deep reinforcement learning has become an indispensable tool for developing these controllers. While deep reinforcement learning is rapidly gaining popularity, locomotion control policies in physics-based environments are still primitive compared to what humans can achieve. For example, watch this video of a parkour athlete navigating across stepping stones with impressive motor skills. Hey everyone, this is Nam Hee Kim from the University of British Columbia. In this work, we push the limits of physics-based locomotion controllers using curriculum-driven learning. In this work, we tackle the challenge of stepping stones locomotion, where we make the character navigate a sequence of steps that are lying in different configurations. The goals associated with solving the stepping stones problem are as follows. So first, we want to achieve precise control over the stepping locations by coordinating different body parts of the character. Failing to do so can result in missing a target or even worse, losing balance and falling over. For the policy to be useful, it must be able to handle difficult steps that are typical in real life situations, such as stepping locations that are lying in uh, various uh, lengths, uh, heights and orientation. Also, we would like to avoid using reference motion. Although some of the recent work uses reference motion, uh, motion capture clips in general are very difficult to obtain, and we would like our controllers to work on non-humanoid characters as well. Stepping Stones locomotion is a long-standing problem in animation and robotics dating back many years. Uh, as an example of more recent advances in Stepping Stones locomotion, the video on the right shows the results from Win et al, who solved 3D Stepping Stones locomotion using a two-step periodic gate optimization. However, the steps in these papers don't involve variations in height or orientation, which makes the problem much easier, and using even vanilla reinforcement learning algorithms can produce decent controllers for these settings. So our aim is to solve the most general cases of stepping stones locomotion in the three-dimensional world, which involve variations in height, distance, and three-dimensional step tilt. In order to take different configurations of steps into account and uh, achieve precise control over the stepping locations, the control policy must be aware of what the upcoming steps look like. So we communicate information about two upcoming steps using our five-dimensional step parameterization. In our five-dimensional step parameters, we include information about the offset between the character's root node and each step target, as well as the tilt of each step surface. In our reinforcement learning setup, we introduce task rewards so that the control policy can successfully learn to step across challenging steps. Uh, namely, we design two different reward mechanisms. Uh, first one is a one-time bonus when the character's foot makes a successful contact with the current stepping target. The other one is a continuous reward that is given proportional to the forward progress the character makes. This is like playing a game of Super Mario Brothers, where a player can collect a coin and then a one-time bonus would be added to the score but the player must still make forward progress in order to finish the game. Of course, our stepping stones environment is much less forgiving in that missing a target may result in failure. In addition to task rewards, we also provide style rewards to make sure that the produced trajectories are visually appealing. To this end, we combine a few tricks out of our pocket, such as avoiding the joint limits of the character, making sure that the root node of the character is at a good height as to prevent slouching posture, and also penalizing for mechanical energy spent during the actions so that the movements are efficient and natural. We also encourage symmetry by mixing in mirror trajectories during training, which is a technique that we discovered in a previous work. Interestingly, without using symmetry, the control policy can discover alternative locomotion modes such as sidestepping shown in this video. 
Another way to achieve natural motions is to pre-train a control policy that mimics reference motion from some human expert trajectory or reference motion capture. We do this for one of our models, which is a simulated robot character. We train our policies using a standard implementation of the proximal policy optimization algorithm. In most cases, training a policy from scratch would take around 12 to 24 hours in a single GPU machine. Here, we describe our system for generating step sequences. As with uh, traditional feedback controllers, we have a control loop between the policy and the environment. In our case, the environment encapsulates what we call a step generator, as well as the simulator. The step generator is responsible for, of course, generating new steps, and it does so by sampling from the space of step parameters and generates information about the new stepping target, which is communicated to both the policy and the simulator. The simulator receives information about the upcoming steps and creates corresponding physical steps which are used to compute interactions within the simulation. Finally, the control policy observes the state of the character which includes the information about the two upcoming steps and computes appropriate actions. So in our system, the way we sample step parameters to generate new steps is the core design question. One way to do this, of course, is to uniformly sample from the entire space of step parameters. However, this depends on a naive assumption that the control policy must be able to handle really difficult steps from the get-go, which is obviously not true. We observe that if we throw all the difficult steps from the start, the control policy doesn't learn to navigate difficult steps, it only chooses to navigate really easy steps and chooses to stand still instead of moving forward. To address the shortcoming of the naive approach, we propose to use curriculum-driven learning in which the policy uh, practices on easy steps and then gradually moves on to more difficult steps. In our system, the curriculum controls the distribution of the step parameters, hence the difficulty of the step sequences being generated. The curriculum will adjust the difficulty setting of the environment based on the capability of the current policy, which is estimated by the reward or value function output. There are many different ways to create learning curricula, so the usage of curriculum-driven learning comes with interesting questions, such as what is the best curriculum, and how and when should the curriculum advance? These are some of the main questions explored in our work. So there have been investigations on curriculum-driven learning for the character locomotion, but there haven't been much discussion on the design principles or effectiveness of different learning curricula. For example, we and colleagues start with easy versions of the task and bumps up the uh, difficulty gradually. On the other hand, one and colleagues uh, insist on focusing all attention on the most difficult tasks from the get-go, which works well in the context of imitation learning. As our core contribution, we design and evaluate four different instances of learning curricula on top of our baseline of uniform sampling. We will be describing these curricula in the next slides. Here, we visualize an example of the sampling region within the space of step parameters as a 2D box. We can think of the x-axis as a turning angle of the steps and the y-axis as the step height or elevation. The center is at 0, 0, so it corresponds to the steps that are really easy for the control policy to learn, uh, which are the flat and straight steps. Now, if we move along the x-axis, uh, far away from the center, then we're going to get steps that are turning at much sharper angles. In the same way, if we move along the y-axis and get far away from the center, then we're going to get steps that are steeply elevated. So sampling from this uniform box corresponds to uh, using no curriculum, and as we saw before, it doesn't generate capable policies. The fixed order curriculum is based on the intuition that the easy instances of stepping stones live at the center. As with the naive case, we use a uniform box as the sampling region, but the box starts at the center with a very high concentration, and gradually the sampling region expands in both dimensions when the capability of the policy is high enough based on the handcrafted criteria. 
The fixed order boundary curriculum makes progress in a similar fashion. However, the sampling region is not a box but rather a rectangular donut as the step parameters used in the previous difficulty setting are considered solved problems and not sampled again. The motivation is to avoid generating redundant steps that have already been practiced, so this would allow the policy to learn only the most relevant skills for moving on to the next level. These strategies require a careful design of sampling regions and capability thresholds for advancing the curriculum. The adaptive curriculum is based on the same principle that we should focus most of our effort on learning the most relevant skills for moving on to the next difficulty setting. And the adaptive curriculum does this by practicing the steps that are neither too easy nor too hard. However, instead of manually constructing a learning schedule with predefined rectangular donuts and uh, reward thresholds, uh, we um, let the sampling region evolve continuously over time and adapt to the capability of the current policy. More specifically, given the current policy parameters, uh, we use the value function in our reinforcement learning setup to estimate the difficulty associated with a particular vector of step parameters. We record the step parameters that are 10% more difficult than the easiest ones and adjust the distribution such that these difficult steps are sampled more frequently. Uh, this percentage threshold is controlled by this beta value. As the control policy becomes more capable, the distribution expands to the whole parameter space. Setting this beta value to zero results in the difficult first curriculum, which assigns higher probability towards most difficult step parameters rather than not too easy, not too hard ones. One and colleagues showed in their work that this curriculum may be beneficial because it focuses most of the training efforts on challenging tasks, so the amount of work is proportional to the difficulty of the task. Here, we visualize our curricula in one view. Note that these diagrams have been simplified for the ease of understanding, so please see our paper for more thorough details. From our experiments, we found that uniform sampling and difficult first curriculum didn't work very well and often are stuck in local minima. While others work well and have similar performance in terms of training speed and policy capability. The three curricula that worked well share the common characteristics that they start with easy problems and then gradually move on to more difficult ones. Uh, the fixed order curricula draw from our human intuition of task difficulties and involves handcrafting uh, predefined sampling regions as well as uh, reward thresholds for advancing. In the meantime, the adaptive curriculum might be more performant in cases where human intuitions fail, or uh, handcrafting uh, sampling regions and thresholds might be too burdensome. In summary, we found that it is beneficial to use curricula that uh, start with easy steps and gradually bump up the difficulty as the policy gains capability. Of course, there are a lot of nuances when it comes to deciding which curriculum is the best curriculum, so please read our paper for more details on the sampling strategies. To test our system, we designed a custom 3D humanoid character with moderate strength in PyBullet. We tested the capabilities of the learn control policies against extreme steps whose parameters are far away from the center. Here, for example, the humanoid is walking across extremely long steps. We also put the humanoid through steps steeply going up and down. And spiraling steps with steep turning angles. When pushed to the limit, the control policy can fail. We also created scenarios where the step parameters are undulated between extreme values such as steps at alternating height, long steps and short steps appearing in the same sequence, and steps with extreme forward and backward tilt values. We put the Cassie robot from Agility Robotics to similar tests using Mujoko simulations. 
The simulated model was calibrated to match the performance of the real CASI robot as to allow for potential sim to real applications. Here, we fully exploit the potential of the robot and showcase some state-of-the-art results for locomoting CASI with a learn control policy. We can leverage our stepping stones control policy to handle continuous terrains generated with height fields. In this example, we predefine a circular path on the XY plane and use terrain heights and slopes along that path to generate a feasible step sequence. To our pleasant surprise, the character successfully walks across this continuous terrain, even though the contact and collision handling in simulation is based on the non-constant terrain curvature, which the policy has never seen during training since each stepping stone has a constant tilt. We also designed a cute bipedal humanoid character without abdominal joints and named it the monster. In PyBullet simulations, we learned similar stepping stone skills for this character. We can customize our system by modifying the reward functions. In this scenario, we encourage the humanoid to move at a faster root velocity. The resulting control policy produces a running motion across the stepping stones. All the while, the policy enjoys the capability and robustness brought by curriculum-driven learning. We observe that we can push the velocity pretty high, and the policy holds up well. We can also tweak our system to incorporate user command as to enable interaction. Here, the monster is given a command to stop or to go. Customizing our system lets us examine how the control policy coordinates different body parts. In this scenario, the monster is trained without any modification, but at the test time, we disabled the arms by setting their torque limits to zero. Now the monster can't cope with the motion of the arms after a few steps and eventually loses balance. This shows that the arms are used for maintaining the balance. In some cases, the policy can handle more extreme steps than what the environment produces. We generated steps with larger gaps than those seen during training. The monster is still able to handle the step sequence by developing a leaping motion. There is a visible flight phase when the monster tries to reach a step that is far away. So our overall finding in this work is that curriculum-driven learning can generate powerful controllers for character locomotion. We invite more research into curriculum-driven learning which holds a lot of promise but remains an underexplored research area. Here we discuss limitations and future work. Our method can handle a lot of difficult scenarios that can be solved by walking on the stepping stones, but we would like to discover modes of locomotion uh, that are other than walking such as clambering and jumping that can be very useful in solving more complex and more sophisticated stepping stone scenarios. We still need to extend this work in order to handle more step variations such as steps that are lying side by side which might require sidestepping as a mode of locomotion as well as steps that have very very sharp turning angles. We would like to extend this work towards handling general variable terrains uh, by developing a planner module that can generate desired stepping locations uh, by looking at the surrounding terrain. Uh, we just want to say that we had an incredible amount of fun working on this project. Please visit our project webpage which includes our paper and code. We would like to thank the kind reviewers at SIGGRAPH and SCA 2020 for the amazing feedback. Please also check out Jesse Chewy and Storor whose websites are linked in the description box below. Thank you for watching.